Nerfs or neural radiance fields are probably going to play a pivotal role in the future of AI art and augmented reality. And they've already been used in things like Dream Fusion, where you're converting 2D AI generated images into 3D objects. And they are also used in augmented reality to create transparent and reflective materials from real world objects. So they're used kind of in a photogrammetry like sense. And so today, what I wanted to focus on is just kind of going over the basics of them and then also trying to put some together of ourselves. It's always good to be able to make things that you're talking about. So the best explanation I've heard of what a neural radiance field is is it is the fanciest version of a lenticular image. So lenticular images, when you look at them from different positions, you see different images. So it has a function that is based on the input, the angular input. It'll give a different image out. And so neural radiance fields have the same thing, except for they're much more specific where you can define all of the positions and the exact direction that you're looking. And so it has about five degrees of freedom versus with lenticular images, it's really just one because it's just an angle from the image. So it's basically the fanciest version of those. And then it allows you to also kind of project those into 3D. And that also explains why it's a little bit hard to convert from a nerf directly into something like a glb or a dot object file is because it is a little bit of a different format it's something where you have to put in the input and then the output is the image so it's like there's a you're kind of querying a network for what the image will look like based on the positions that are inputted into it so that's why it has a little bit of a different traits than the standard 3d objects so the first experiment that i tried out is that i wanted to get the pose information directly from webxr uh, one of the problems with that is that the actual description of what pose information is very it's a little bit confusing but there seems to be some sort of mistake that I was making with the axes and so I like that's just something that I have to figure out so I just wanted to highlight this is what happens when you mess up the axes information that can be really helpful it also does create kind of a really neat visual I think there are some things that you can just throw into nerf and it just looks cool <laughs> I think that's valuable in itself <laughs> the second set of experiments that I wanted to try was using a setup that already works so having an image and pose set that already works using the image to image algorithm stable diffusion and then seeing if we end up with a working set of images for nerf. So to be precise, I wanted to change this RCMP character into a goth girl, see if it works. It didn't work super well. It, like the goth still has a red uniform, which like since we're setting the strength value really low, it makes a lot of sense. But my thought was that you would end up with something that works even though you're completely changing the image. And the problem with this is that with the image to image, you don't actually have a lot of coherence between each image. So that's one of the problems that comes up. It has a lot of similarities to a lenticular image that is like not working quite as you'd expect. So it is interesting that that lenticular analogy seems to be pretty apt. It seems to work pretty well in even just like once you start doing things. The third thing that I tried is I wanted to see if the synthetic images would work better. So the images from Blender. And there's a few reasons why these might work a little bit better. They have, they tend to have more precise positional information. So because we are getting information from the photographs of the other ones, it isn't necessarily exact. There's some noise there. Whereas with the synthetic images, there shouldn't be any noise. Also has some advantages with the coloration in the background. So it has a very clear background. I actually think that does improve the method quite a bit. I think using inpainting would help a lot with making the loss function a lot simpler. So that's something that to look at too. So if you wanted to try this yourself, there's quite a bit of an installation process for all these pieces of software, although they are all accessible. So Nerf you actually can get from a GitHub repo, and then you can start running it right away. It has some example data that's really easy to use, the truck and the fern. Uh, but once you start wanting to use your own images, that's where you have to get some extra tools. So Nerf doesn't do pose estimation, and it requires pose. So you need to know what the position and rotation of the camera was when it was taking the picture. And in order to get that information, they suggest using something called LL. F and that also converts it into the right format. So I would strongly suggest that because converting into the right format is a pretty big challenge in itself. So once you get LLF working, uh, that also has some extra dependencies like whole map and uh, this a few others as well. So there's quite a bit of installation that you have to do in order to get all these things working, but they do tend to work nicely together once they're all functioning. I ran into some difficulties, so I'm making this seem a little bit more complicated than it probably will be for you. Uh, but yeah, everything is accessible. It's just all the installation takes some time. And then there is also stable diffusion which can be its own challenge in installing. So the pipeline for this is taking a bunch of photographs, putting those into LLF to get the pose information, so the position and rotation of where the camera was pointed, and then using that information with the images in Nerf, and then that will slowly train up a Nerf network. If you wanted to turn it into something like a .ob file or a GLB file, then you'd have to use some extra algorithm on that fine part. I wanted to make it clear the differences between what I was doing and what DreamFusion is doing. So DreamFusion is this algorithm that does text to 3D objects, and so so the main difference is that they do a very coupled algorithm where the nerf is tied directly in with the stable diffusion. So it's basically creating images and then sending those to Imogen to create a loss function. So uh, it's much closer where it's like actually rendering and then using that to create a loss function to optimize. Whereas what I was doing is I was pre-rendering a bunch of images and then optimizing those re-rendered images. So there's two sources in particular that 
I wanted to thank for this particular idea. So the first one was Sarah Marty. She was putting together multiple layers of these AIs and then using them together. So using stable diffusion with nerfs, those are two separate AIs that I was kind of trying to combine together. So that idea of layering AI eyes, I think is going to become more and more popular in the future. It's augmented thinker from Reddit. He put up a video where he showed a nerf and um, in particular a nerf of a lava lamp. And that made me realize how much similar nerfs are to lenticular images and how they might actually be able to combine together differing images into a cohesive things. Okay, thanks and have a great day.